all those trials you've got to think of the peace of the church now just an aside just an aside we're not covering this issue in this in this topic in this study but I want to make something very clear which is very important we don't try to keep peace at any price here it's peace about things that are not essential things that are not that important it's not that important in a church business meeting if someone says we should have uh, new chairs in the church and someone said, should, says no we should have keep the old chairs because we've always had them it's not that important okay there are things that we can argue about in church and get upset about that are not important there are issues in the church that might upset you but are not that important it might be that you were leading a ministry in the church and someone's been promoted above you and I know that it's painful for you but it's not that important what I mean to say it's not that important f enough for you then to go and break unity within the church okay it's not an, it's not a, a serious not enough matter for you then to break the church unity if someone hurts your pride then swallow your pride for the sake of the unity of the church yeah I know that's hard but don't worry about that God look after your reputation God looks after your ministry you don't have to worry about it so, it's, so there are things in church this is my parenthesis there are things in the church that when disunity when, when things come up it's not that important however here's my parenthesis doesn't mean to say that we stick to unity at any price if for example the pastor or the elders in the church said that the Bible is not inspired that there are faults in the Bible that the Bible has mistakes in it the Bible is not the Word of God fully and you as a church member say to the leaders and to the congregation the pastor and the elders are wrong the Bible is fully inspired it is fully the Word of God there are no faults within the Bible and half the congregation agree with you and half the congregation agree with your pastor and your elders then that is a thing that you have a right to say and if it splits the church then you've done no wrong because that was a fundamental serious issue yeah so there is a time when you have to make a stand there is a time when you have to draw the line in the sand and say enough's enough our church is either doing a practice that is going completely against the Bible or our church has departed from some fundamental biblical teaching and I am going to speak out and if it splits the church then so be it but someone has to say something yeah that's when it gets serious and the ch then you have a right to speak out and if it splits the church you're not you, you've done no wrong if in your church um, the pastor says that he is going to initiate gay marriage and you turn around and say no the Bible teaches that this is not biblical and some of the church officers follow your pastor some of the congregation follow your pastor you are you have the right at that moment your pastor and the elders that follow your pastor and the congregation that follow your pastor at that moment they are they are not following the word of God and they are breaching breaking you they are breaking the church up not you and you have a right to say no we're going to stand for biblical truth and then you need to either ask them to leave 
or you need to go and set up a church or go to a church where it's biblical so this whole message this whole study is basically about unity it's about being strong in the church through unity and I just wanted to make sure that I'm not advocating uh, unity at any price but at all cost we must try and maintain unity okay we'll leave it there and we'll go on to the next part hi folks so we're looking at how to be a strong church we've looked at um, the importance of unity and I give, gave you a parenthesis and uh, you, you understand what I did there the second point of my message is remember the importance of Christ's example Teresa of Avil says by meditating upon Christ's humility we shall see how far we have ha sorry by meditating upon Christ's humility we shall see how far we are from being humble Teresa of Avil by meditating on Christ's humility on who Christ is we will see how far we have fallen in that area For, um, this unity comes in because we have a big opinion of our own importance we become proud and when we look at the Lord Jesus Christ when we look at his life we see how he was not proud how he was humble and it's by looking at Christ and seeing how he conducted himself that we can learn to be humble and therefore we will be people who are prepared by God to bring unity within a church Philippians chapter 2 verse 6 and 8 it says who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God to something to be grasped but made himself nothing taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being fond found in appearance as a man here it is he humbled himself became obedient to death even the death on a cross verse 6 being Greek is unchangeable nature yet the unchangeable nature of God and yet he made himself Jesus made himself of no reputation imagine that Jesus is God and yet he became man he humbled himself now if Jesus can do that when we are confronted in a situation in a church where our reputation our pride is being criti criticized and we're, we're wanting to defend ourselves and we wanted to push back Christ humbled himself made himself no reputation and so we should humble ourselves we should have that same attitude in John chapter 10 verse 33 we are not stoning you for any of these replied the Jews but blasphemy because you a mere man claim to be God in other words these Jews realized that Jesus was God in the flesh Jesus Christ was God in the flesh but he did not he did not use his authority to pull people down to push people aside so that he could be number one he lived he was the very essence of humility so how does this play out well imagine you're in a church meeting and the kitchen needs new cups and, and saucers and you have uh, a Mrs. Daffy and a Mrs. Duffy now Mrs. Daffy she wants she's rather posh she wants china cups 
that's Mrs. Daffy and Mrs. Duffy she wants plain old fashioned cups and there's a big argument in the church meeting then you have the Daffy Miss Daffy group who agree with Miss Daffy and then you have the Miss Duffy group who agrees with Miss Duffy and you're tempted to join each one of the sides what you need to do is rather get into one group and then your pride is hurt and Mrs. Duffy says Mrs. Mrs. Duffy doesn't understand how the kitchen works and you're part of the Miss Duffy group and you get offended how dare you say that about Mrs. Duffy she knows what she's doing and then the Duffy group Miss Duffy group say and how dare you say that about Mrs. Duffy you know this is how it goes in church meetings can can get up hand of hand and then Mrs. Duffy starts crying I've been offended Mrs. Duffy gets up and walks out in a half all for what? teacups <laughs> all for teacups what we need to do what you need to do is to encourage unity within that situation you go in it with a humble heart and say well can't we compromise is there not any way where we can meet each other halfway on this you can be the mediator and come in in a humble way uh, and and try to de-escalate the situation I'm just smiling because that's the way it is in churches church business meetings so we, we have to here's William Barclay again uh, again a liberal guy I don't agree with liberalism I'm an evangelical I believe the word of God is the word of God but he, he was a good commentator on some things and he says the great characteristic of Jesus life were humility obedience self renouncing he did not desire to dominate men he desired to serve men he did not desire his own way he desired God's way I think that's a beautiful thought I put here if we want unity we should have the attitude of humility that Christ had we mustn't have a high estimation of ourselves a minister talking to about John Wesley said this So, sorry, a minister was talking to George Whitfield about John Wesley. Okay, John Wesley was a field preacher, and Whitfield was a field preacher. And the minister was talking about John Wesley to George Whitfield, and just listening to the conversation. The minister talking about John Wesley said, "Will you see him in heaven?" "No, sir," replied Whitfield. I fear not, for that he will be so near the throne, and we shall be such a distance, we shall hardly get a sight of him. Isn't that wonderful? Whitfield saying, no, I think Wesley will be so much closer to God than I will. That's a wonderful humility there. Number three, remember the importance of going forward in the Christian life. I think this is important it, it's kind of like um, a car if you've got a car and you don't put oil in the car you don't put the water in the engine the car's going to just seize up eventually it's got to be maintained and the Christian life has to be maintained you've got to keep going as a Christian and going forward as a Christian very often Christians can become worldly minded and cold and not godly not Christian as they should be and that's very very dangerous when it comes to church unity because when a situation happens in the church where it is difficult if you're not walking a godly life if you have cooled down as a Christian you're going to add fuel to the fire of disunity within the church because you are not going to be able to handle it in a 